Hello guys and gals, and this is part 30 of our reading of the Harvard Classics, and we're going to go over what the Harvard Classics actually are. The Harvard Classics are composed of the Apology, Phaedo, and Credo of Plato, which uh, translated by Benjamin Jowett, which we have already read. The Golden Sayings of Epictetus, translated by Hastings Crossley, which we have already read. And the Meditations of Marcus Aurelius, translated by George Long, which we are reading now. Um, this book was edited by Charles W. Elliott, LLD, with introduction and notes. The copyright information should be on your screen right now. And it clearly says here, it's copyright 1980, 1937, and 1907 by Grawley Enterprises Corporation, manufactured in the United States. And we left off at number 45, I believe, in the Meditations of Marcus Aurelius. And we are going to continue from there. Number 45. Whatever happens to every man, this for the interest of the universal, this might be sufficient. But further, thou wilt observe that also as a general truth. If thou dost observe that whatever is profitable to any man is profitable also to other men. But let the word profitable be taken here in the common sense, as said of things of the middle kind. Neither good nor bad. Number 46. As it happens to thee in the amphitheater and such places, that the continual sight of the same thing and the uniformity makes the um, spectacle wearisome, so it is in the whole of life. For all things above, below, are the same and from the same. How long, then? Number 47. Think continually that all kinds of men and of all kinds of pursuits and of all nations are dead, so that thy thoughts come down even to um, Philistion and, um, and Phoebus and... Oregon, 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 um, now truth, no, no, now turn thy thoughts to the other kind of men, to that place which we must remove, where there are so many great orators and so many noble philosophers. Heraclitus, Pythagoras, Socrates, so many heroes of former days, and so many generals after them, and tyrants. Beside these, um, Eudoxus, Hippocrates, um, Archimedes, and other men of acute natural talents, great minds, lovers of labor, versatile, confident, mockers, even even of the perishable and ephemeral life of man, as Menippus and such as are like him, as to all these consider that they have long been in the dust. What harm then is this to them, and what to those whose names are altogether unknown? One thing here is worth a great deal to pass thy life in truth and justice with a benevolent disposition even to liars and unjust men. Number 48. When thou wishest to delight thyself, think of the virtues of those who live with thee. For instance, the, for instance, the activity of one and the modesty of another and the liber, liberality of a third and some other good quality of a fourth. So nothing delights so much as the example of the virtues. When, thy, or when they are exhibited in the morals of those who live with us and present themselves in abundance as far as is possible, wherefore we must keep them before us. Number 49. Thou art not dissatisfied, I suppose, because thou weighest... only so many liter and not three hundred. Be not dissatisfied then that thou must live only so many years and not more, for as thou art satisfied with the amount of substance which has been assigned to thee, 
so be content with the time. Number 50. Let us try to persuade them, men, but act even against their will when the principle of justice lend that way. If, however, any man by using force stands in thy way, betake thyself to contentment and tranquility, and at the same time employ the hindrance towards the exercise of some other virtue. And remember that they attempt that thy attempt was a reservation conditionally, and thou didst not desire to do impossibilities. What then didst thou desire? Some such some such effort as this, but thou attainest thy object of the things of which thou wast moved are not accomplished. Number 51. He who loves fame considers another man's activity to be his own good, and he who loves pleasure his own sensations. But he who has understanding considers his own act, acts to be his own good. Number 52. It is not in our power to have no opinion about a thing and not to be disturbed in our soul, for things themselves have no natural power to form our judgments. Number 53. Accustom thyself to attend carefully to what is said by another, and as much as it is possible be in the speaker's mind. Number 54. That which is not good for the swarm, neither is it good for the bee. Number 55. If sailors abuse the helmsman or the sick, the doctor, would they listen to anybody else? Or how could the helmsman secure the safety of those in the ship, or the doctor the health of those whom he attends? Number 56. How many together with whom I came into the world are already gone out of it? Number 57. To the jaundiced honey taste, to the jaundiced honey tastes bitter, and to those bitten by mad dogs, water causes fear, i.e. rabies. And to little children, the ball is a fine thing. Why then am I angry? Dost thou think that a false opinion has less power than the hide, in, than the bile in the jaundice, or the poison in him who is bitten by a mad dog? Number 58. No man will hinder thee from living according to the reason of thy own nature. Nothing will happen to the contrary to the reason of the universal nature. <clears throat> Number 59. What kind of people are those whom men wish to please, and for what objects, and by what kind of acts? How soon will time cover all things, and how many it is covered already? We are to part seven now. Part seven, number one. What is, what is badness? Is it that which, ha, which thou hast often seen, and on the occasion of everything which happens, keep this in mind, that it is that which thou hast often seen? Everywhere up and down thou wilt find the same things with which the old histories are filled those of the Middle Ages, and those of our own days, oh, the own, those of our own day, with which cities and houses are filled now. There is nothing new. All things are both familiar and short-lived. Number two, how can our principles become dead unless the impressions, thoughts, which correspond to them are extinguished? But it is in thy power continually to fan these thoughts into a flame. I can have the opinion about anything which I ought to have. If I can, why am I disturbed? The things which are external to my mind have no relation at all to my mind. Let this be the, same, let this be the state of thy effects, and thou standest erect. To recover thy life it is in thy power. Look at things again as thou didst use to look at them, for in this consists the recovery of thy life. Number three, the idle business of show plays on the stage 
flocks of sheep, herds, exercises with spears, a bone to cast to little dogs, a bit of bread into fish ponds, laborings of ants, and burden-carrying runnings about of frightened little mice, puppets pulled by strings, all alike. It is thy duty, then, in the midst of such things, to show good humor and not, and not a proud air, to understand, however, that every man is worth just so much as the things are worth about which he busies himself. <coughs> Excuse me. Number four. It's, oh, in discourse, thou must attend to what is said, and in every mo movement thou must observe what is doing. And in the one thou should thou should see immediately to what end it refers, but in the other watch carefully what it uh, what is the thing signified. Number five, in my understanding sufficient for. Is my understanding sufficient for this or not? If it is sufficient, I use it for the work as an instrument given by the universal nature. But if it is not sufficient, then either I retire from the work and give way to him who is able to do it better, unless there be some reason why I ought not to do, to do so, or I do it as well as I can, taking, um, taking to help me the man with whom oh, who with the aid of my ruling principle can do what is now fit and useful for the general good for whatsoever either by myself or with another i can do ought to be directed to this only to that which is useful and well suited to society number six how many, after being celebrated by fame, have been given up to oblivion? And how many who have celebrated the fame of others have long been dead? Number seven, do not be ashamed to be helped, for it is thy business to do thy duty like a soldier in the uh, assault on a town. How then, if being lame, thou canst not mount up on the battlements alone, but with the help of another, it is possible. Number eight, let not future things disturb thee, for thee wilt come to them, if it shall be necessary, having with thee the same reason which now thou used for present things. Number nine, all things are implicated with one another, and the bond, in, and the bond is holy. And there is hardly anything unconnected with any other thing, for things have been coordinated, and they combine to form the same universe, order. For there is one universe made up of all things, and one God who pervades all things, and one substance, and one law, one common reason in all intelligent animals, and one truth. If indeed there is also one perfection of all animals, which are of the same stock and participate in the same reason. Number 10. Everything material soon disappears in the substance of the whole, and everything formal, casual, is very soon taken back into the universal reason. And the memory of everything is very soon overwhelmed in time. Number 11. To the rational animal, the same act is according to nature and according to reason. Number 12. Be thou erect, or be made erect. Number 13. Just as it is with the members in those bodies which are united in one, so it is with rational beings which, which exist separate, for they have been constantly uh, constituted for one cooperation, and the perception of this will be more apparent to thee if thou often sayest to thyself that I am a member of the system of rational beings, but if, if using the R thou sayest that thou art a part, thou dost not love men from thy heart. Beneficence does not yet delight 
thee for its own sake, thou still dost it barely as a thing of um, propriety and not yet as doing good to thyself. Number 14. Let there fall externally that... Um, sorry. <clears throat> Number 14. Let there fall externally what will on the parts which can feel the effect of this fall. For those parts which have felt will complain if they choose. But I, unless I think th that what was happened is an evil, I am not injured, and it is in my power not to think so. Number 15. Whatever anyone does or says, I must be good just as if the gold or the emerald or the purple were always saying, th saying this. Whatever anyone does or says, I must be emerald and keep my color. Number 16, the ruling faculty does not disturb thy, it does not disturb itself. I mean, does not frighten itself or cause itself pain. But if anyone else can frighten or pain it, let him do so. For the faculty itself will not be, will not by itself own, oh, oh wait. For the faculty itself will not, by its own opinion, turn into such ways. Let the body itself take care, if it can, that it suffer nothing, and, if, and let it speak if it suffers. But the soul itself, that which is subject to fear, to pain, which has completely the power of forming an opinion about these things, will suffer nothing, for it will never deviate into such, such a judgment. The leading principle in itself wants nothing unless it makes a want for itself, and therefore it is both free from uh, perturbation and unimpeded, and it does not disturb and Im impede itself. Number 17. You... You... Uh, <coughs> you Eudaimonia, happiness, is a good demon, or a good thing. What thou art, what then art thou doing here, O imagination? Go away. I entreat thee by the gods, as thou didst come, for I want thee not. But thou art come according to thy old fashion. Old fashion. I am not angry with thee. Only go away. Number eighteen. Is any man afraid of change? Why, what can take place without change? What then is more pleasant, what is more pleasing or more suitable to the universe, to the universal nature? And canst thou take a bath unless the wood undergoes a change? And canst thou be nourished unless the food undergoes a change? And can anything else that is useful be accomplished without change? Dost thou not see then that for thyself also to change is just the same and equally necessary for the universal nature. Number 19. Um, through the universal substance, as through a furious torrent, all bodies are carried, being by their nature united with the cooperating, yeah, cooperating with the whole, as the parts of the body with one another. How many... Okay... How many a um, Chrysippus, how many a Socrates, how many an Epictetus has times already swallowed up? And let the same thought occur to thee with reference to every man and thing. Number 20. One thing only troubles me, lest I should do something which the constitution of man does not allow, or in the way which it does not allow, or what it does not allow now. 21. Near is, near is thy forgetfulness of all things, and near the forgetfulness of thee by all. Number 22. <clears throat> it is peculiar to, to man to love even those who do wrong. And this, and this happens. 
if when they do wrong it occurs to thee that they are kinsmen, and that they do wrong through ignorance and unintentionally, and that soon both you both of you will die, and above all that the wrongdoer has done thee no harm, for he has not made thy ruling faculty worse than it was before. Number twenty three. The universal nature, out of the universal substance, as if it were wax, now molds a horse, and when it has broken this up, it uses the material for a tree, then for a man, then for something else, and each of these things subsists for a very short time, but it is no hardship for the vessel to be broken up, just as there were none in it being fastened together. Or no, 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 it's being fastened together. Okay, no, I see. Okay, number twenty-four. A scowling look is altogether unnatural. When it is often assumed, the result is that all comeliness dies away, and at last is so completely extinguished that it cannot be again lighted up at all. Try to conclude from this very fact that it is contrary to reason, for if even the perception of doing wrong shall depart. What reason is there for living any longer? Number 25. Nature, which governs the whole, will soon change all things which thou sees, ceased, and out of their substances will make an other things, and again other things from the substance of them, in order that the world may be, new, may be ever new. Number 26. When a man has done thee any wrong, immediately consider with what opinion about good or evil he has done wrong. For when thou hast seen this, thou wilt pity him, and wilt neither wonder nor be angry, for either thou thyself thinkest the same thing to be good that he does, or anything, or another thing of the same kind. It is thy duty, then, to pardon him, but if thou dost not think such things to be good or evil, thou wilt more readily be well disposed to him who is in error. Number 27. <coughs> think not so much of what thou hast not as of what thou hast, but of the things which thou hast selected the best and then reflect how eagerly they would have been sought if thou hadst them not. At the same time, however, take care that thou dost not, through being so pleased with them, accustom themselves to over -evaluate, no, to overvalue them, so as to be disturbed if ever thou should not have them. Number 28. Retire into thyself the rational uh, principle which rules has this nature that is that it is content with itself when it does what is just and so secures tranquility number 29 wipe out the imagination stop the pulling of the strings confine confine thyself to the present understand well what happens either to thee or to another divide and distribute each object into the casual formal and the material. Think of the last hour. Let the wrong which hath been done to man stay there where the wrong was done. Number 30. Number 30. <clears throat> Direct thy attention to what is said. Let thy understanding enter into the things that are doing, into the things that are doing, and the things which do them. Number 31. Adorn thyself with simplicity and modesty, and with indifference toward the things which lie between virtue and vice. Love mankind, follow God. The poet says that law rules all, and it is enough to remember that law rules all. Um, okay, and it says that the end of this section is in intelligible, whatever that means. Okay, number 32. About death, whether it is a dispersion or a resolution into atoms or annihilation, it is either extinction or change. 
number 33, about pain. The pain which is intolerable carries us off, but that which lasts a long time is tolerable, and the mind maintains its own tranquility by retiring into itself, and the ruling faculty is not made worse. But the parts which are harmed by pain, let them, if they can, give their opinion about it. I think we'll stop it at number 34. We have been reading from the Harvard Classics, specifically the Meditations of Marcus Aurelius. And if you like this content, make sure you like and subscribe and ring the bell so you know when I upload. Also, once more, in any way, if you want to join the Discord server, all the information will be in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great day.